being a space smuggler is challenging, and so in the game uh, Antimatter, you will be relaxing after a hard day's worth of smuggling or gathering, and you'll be playing at the local pub or brewery, attempting to earn some additional credits. And in the game Antimatter, you're basically going to be doing two different things that have a combination effect. One is a type of collect and or pick up and deliver aspect to the game, and the other is going to be Texas Hold'em, but with very unique twists and added changes to the game. You'll be choosing a specific character or color, basically, as well as a deck of cards, and you'll be moving your rocks and other rockets and attempting to gather chips during the first round of the game, and in the second round of the game, you'll be utilizing those chips to play Texas Hold'em. Now, an interesting thing, too, like I said before, is everybody gets their own unique deck of cards which you can either play during the loot phase or the poker phase and you will be attempting to cheat in certain ways or give yourself a certain benefit or your opponents a negative in both phases as well as there is a dreaded grifter card in the poker deck which has a unique twist to it as well and then after you finish that round of Texas Hold'em somebody's gonna win or there's going to be a split pot and you're going to continue playing and as you continue playing the space or the board that you're on is going to be rotating because there are planets and it's going to be rotating around the solar system and perhaps even your ships as well. Will you be able to gather enough credits to earn the coveted coin and then gather enough credits to wreak out a victory? Or are you going to be lost in space and derelict due to the fact that you can't play poker and you're not good at gathering resources either? Let's take a look down below. I'll show you the game Antimatter and how to play and then we'll come up. Welcome to Antimatter, the space race game where you're attempting to gather poker chips for the tournament that you're going to take place every single round up until the point where somebody gets enough of the chips. Now, everybody will choose a color and with that will come the two different ships they're going to be rocking, whether it's going to be the rocks, quite literally, or the ravens, your little guys here. You'll choose the color and appropriately place your two ravens on either side of your rock in any of these areas around the board. Make sure you populate the board in any of the spaces that have a color. So for blue, you're going to put the blue chips, red and white will be the same and then you're going to have some player maybe the first player choose where to place the purple planet in the inner ring and then place all of the planets down the line doesn't matter if they go on a chip or not Every player is going to then get a deck of cards based on the type of ship color they chose, and each deck is unique, as well as they'll be getting a player reference card, and this is going to tell you not only the hands of poker, but the turns and phases of the game. Give everybody 300 chips. I would recommend doing four white, two red, and a blue, and its dom denominations are 25, 50, and of course 100. The next denominations are going to be 500 for these black ones here, and then there's this specialty coin, which is once you hit 2,500, or depending on the number of players, it might be different, you'll gain one of those, and that will allow you to win the game, and hopefully gather the next amount of currency, which is likely going to be 3,000 in at least a four-player game, and then you can win that way. You're also going to be getting a deck of playing cards, which will look just like a deck of playing cards in every way, except there is a unique card, which is the Grifter, which we'll talk about in a second here, but yes, it's basically a deck of playing cards with a unique type of, uh, of card in there. And then, of course, you're going to get this deck of cards here, and they're going to do certain things that are going to fluctuate and change the style of poker that you'll be playing. Now let's talk about the base game and the just the basic first part, which is the looting phase, in which you're going to be taking three burns. Three burns will equate to three actions, and your actions include moving, and moving and looting, and moving and placing or moving warp gates here that you have, or your gates. The way it works pretty simply is your guys here, these uh, are going to move two spaces whenever you take a burn, and the rocks here are going to take one. So ravens are two, rocks are one space. Ravens can move to and then place out these wonderful gates here. Ravens can also pick up these chips here as well. So whenever you're moving a raven, as long as you move it on top of one of these chips, you can pick it up. Each one can only loot once, unless otherwise stated. The rocks are the same thing, except they move slower. And in addition to that, they're going to be looting planets. So you're going to need to be on the same space as a planet, and you'll be able to loot two chips of that planet's color, as well as one of these unique little squares 
squares there that you'll be turning into the middle of the board to gain a bonus. Oh yeah, dealer chip. This is the first player token. If you can collect all the different colors of these squares and bring the rock to the middle, you're going to score 100 points for each one as well as a 250 bonus. And if you just want to simply turn them in, you'll get 100 for each. The last thing to really talk about when movement, where movement is concerned, and the basic actions is these little gates here. So if you move your raven, for instance, if you move your raven here, you can go ahead and place an adjacent gate. And then when you move your next raven two spaces, maybe you move it like this, you can place another adjacent gate. In which case your rock can use a burn to go through all of the gates as a single movement or a single action or a single burn, however you want to look at it. Whenever you move away from a planet, that's going to net you a bonus movement, so that utilize that as best as you can. And whenever a planet is moving with moving while you're on the same space, the rocks will move with those planets, basically circling them in orbit. Everybody gets their three burns, and I'll go around the table, starting with the dealer. And after that, you'll move on to the next phase of play, which is the poker phase. The only thing else I didn't really talk about is the fact that there are some cards in the game that will have loot or poker, and on your turn, if you want to play loot cards, you can do so, and that will let you take unique actions or unique benefits with your looting phase, and whenever you land on one of these chips here with a uh, raven and you collect that chip, you'll also get to draw a loot card from your deck and put it into your hand. Okay, let's discuss now the poker phase. Another thing to note are these green chips here. If you loot them and you can only loot them with your ravens here, you are going to be able to discard your hand and drop to seven cards from your deck, or you can simply drop to seven cards. The choice is yours. So let's talk about Texas Hold'em, but we're gonna be brief on this because most of you have probably already played or heard of Texas Hold'em and there's a lot to discuss as far as how that goes, but the basic idea is Texas Hold'em plays just like a five card draw poker game, but with some unique details. If you're playing a two player game in Texas Hold'em, each player is gonna get two cards and they're going to look at those two cards. They'll be their own personal cards. After that, you will be then dropping down three cards on the table and players are going to bet for the beginning. They'll bet for, they'll, they'll place their ante for the beginning. They'll place their bet for the first hand they have. Then they'll bet for the first three cards that come out. They'll bet for the fourth card. They'll bet for the fifth card. And then they'll all reveal their hands. And the person who has the best poker hand is going to be the winner. And if you look, this is going to tell you on this card here what the poker hands, what the poker hands are. Regardless of whether you burn cards or not, I'm not too certain. Uh, we did in one game, we didn't do another, and we did in another. So I, I guess it's kind of up to you guys. The only thing that's really different in this is you could play cards on your turn and off your turn that have the folk poker phase on them, and they'll do certain things. Maybe it'll trump a bet and let you steal a coin from a player who was going to bet three. Now they only bet two, and you get to keep one. Or you're going to get something interesting like a grifter. Let's see if I flip these over and get one. Probably not. won't be that lucky. Okay. But if you did get a grifter, it's a little G in, in the deck here. And the grifter is unique. The grifter means if you can win the hand with everyone else folding, meaning they're, they, they were out of the, they pushed themselves out of the game and you're the only person left, you win the entire pot like you normally would. And you also win 20 times the ante. The ante starts at 25 and it multiplies uh, incrementally every four rounds or every four phases loot loot and poker loot poker loot poker loot poker then you up the ante and this will give you 20 times that which is very 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 good and it's worth doing however if anybody stays in with you regardless of what your hand is if you have the grifter you lose period if it's both of you it's a split pot Another small thing to note too is after every four rounds, not only do you increase the ante, but this board is going to be significantly depleted of resources. And that means that you're going to need to fill the board up, placing resources back on the board. And when you do that, if there are any resources already on the board, you're just going to stack the extra resources on top. In every white space will go one white chip, and in every space that's red and blue, will the same will happen. Oh, and the green and the purple planets don't provide you with the two chip bonus, but they do give you that color specific, that, that specific color uh, cube that you can use to turn in for the set bonus in the game. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Another little thing to note, too, is if the Grifter were to come out on the flop, which is the first three cards, you're going to trigger something really unique. One of these cards here, the deck of um, 
Enigmas, the Enigma deck. You flip it over, you'll read it, it'll affect the game in some way, and then you'll keep playing. You'll discard the Grifter here, and you'll put a new card out. Whenever a Grifter comes out any other way, the Grifter is always going to be removed after satisfying the effect. And if you don't like the Grifter and don't want to use him in your starting hand, you can simply discard him and take a new card into your hand from the deck face down. And then you go ahead and continue. The last little bit of things to talk about is after the poker round or poker phase is over, you are going to move planets as well as potentially move your ships. And the way that works is pretty simple. You will look at the planets. They're all going to go clockwise around the board and you're going to move them based on their pedestal height. So this one will move two spaces. This one will move two. This one here is only going to move one, but because the rock is on it, the big ship, it will move with it. Then you have this one here. This is the white one. It's worth three, one, two, three. And then the green one goes two. And so these plants will continue to circle around the board, giving everybody a chance to use their rocks to get on them, to gather the currency to hopefully turn in the currency in the middle of the board. Somebody hits 2,500 points or whatever the required amount of points is, you're going to take the chip. And if you don't score in the same round, if you get to the next round and you get up to 3,000 or more, you will win the game as long as you have the chip. Now, there's some different variations as to how that works, but for the most part, that's the, pretty much the idea of the game. I want to come up now and discuss this uh, little interesting thing here, which is the cards. I want to talk about the deck. Um, and I also let you know too, the dealer does pass clockwise. It's not very often where I come across a game that has two separate portions to it that are separate but function together. And in Antimatter, you're going to be doing one portion with your rocks and ravens, moving them around to planets and other locations in space to gather chips. And of course, the pickup and delivery aspect of the gathering the rocks, getting those little squares and moving them to the middle of the board and making a collection as well. And that's interesting because it plays a role in how many chips you're going to have for the poker phase. You can also use your cards, which is your own unique deck, and every single player is going to have their own unique deck. They'll let you do certain things like, for instance, let's look at a loot card here. Your rock may loot twice this phase. Normally they can all loot once. Or perhaps you can use Overdrive, where you move your rock up to two spaces onto a depleted plunder hex, a space that doesn't have a chip, and then you may replenish that plunder. Wow. That's really nice. Uh, there's also cards in your deck that are going to be more powerful than others. There's a base set of cards, so there's like five or six of two different types, and then you have your like captains in the deck, and those guys have some supreme power, and I'll talk about one during the poker phase that I really like. But you're utilizing your deck in both instances, and to refresh your deck, you're going to be going ahead and collecting chips, which you would already do anyway, or going off to the off-beaten world and collecting that green chip, which will let you replenish your hand and utilize that in both phases. So it's really important and then it transitions and it transitions into playing blackjack If you're not a blackjack player, this game's not going to be for you It doesn't take away from blackjack or change it enough to where you don't feel like you're playing blackjack You are or not blackjack <laughs> I'm talking about Texas Hold'em mess. Yes. If you don't like playing Texas Hold'em you will not like this game. It's not going to change it enough to where you're like, oh, I don't feel like I'm playing Texas Hold'em anymore. You definitely do. But if you do like Texas Hold'em and you do like poker in general, what you're going to get is a unique experience that adds these weird like player powers and player cards as well as the unique grifter where you can choose to kind of do certain things or not. Texas Hold'em is already rather quite intricate in using the whole bluffing and social aspect of the game when then attaching it to a modern board game. It pre pre presents some even unique difficulties and challenges and some like intrigue as well when the grifter drops down and you have to play one of the enigma cards and something happens like each player st uh, still in the hand takes back all but one of their total bet and <laughs> That's that's pretty nuts when somebody thinks they have a great hand they bet really high that changes the game flow and that is what the cards will do is change the way the flow of the game works. One of my favorite cards in my deck was when somebody when the last cards the last two cards would drop I can play it just before that happens and both cards will go face down and only I can look at them which is crazy powerful. And everybody gets those cards in the game while you are playing. Now you might not get to use them that often because you only get to use them once until you have to reshuffle your deck, but there are a certain number of good cards in your hand that you can utilize and in your deck throughout the game. And you basically will get to use at least that powerful card one time because you'll go through almost your entire deck in the game. 
The artwork in the game is great. It looks fun. It looks very vibrant. It's got a lot of purple in it. There he's going to have the large planet pieces. I'm, I know this is a prototype, so I'm expecting it probably be different. The pieces obviously look like they were 3D printed, but the cool rocks and ravens function fairly well, moving around the board and stuff like that. And normally you're not going to have a problem with too many pieces on, but that can happen. There can be a lot of pieces in a specific area. We've noticed that in some cases, if you're not paying attention and you do something or shake or whatever, pieces will go in certain areas. If you watch the live stream, you'll see that it happened occasionally. We have to kind of redirect. And as long as we weren't thinking too silly, we can figure out where they went. As well, the course of the game does increase in the pace. You're not going to play more than about eight or nine rounds of this because the ante start increasing, players start getting more money, and people start getting more desperate as the game goes on, noticing one player is taking the lead. And you have to watch out for that and maybe even work together with your opponents to make another player suffer, which is quite different than in the game of just simply playing Texas Hold'em. You can also win the game without actually winning in Texas Hold'em whatsoever. You can utilize your cards as best as you can to stay in and pull as much from your opponents based on the cards you're playing, and then you can focus on going around and collecting, doing the whole pickup and delivery aspect of the first portion of the game, and if players keep messing with each other too much and they stay kind of even, you will slowly pull yourself ahead. Now, it's obviously better to do both. You want to win at least a couple games here and there, as well as do as best as you possibly can in the pickup deliver phase and make sure you gather the right tokens in the best possible play you can and utilizing those warp gates are super fun uh, this game is only going to pertain to certain people you have to like the pickup and delivery aspect and you're also gonna have to like texas hold'em and you're gonna have to like putting both of those games together if you're like i don't know if i'd like the experience of playing texas hold'em without i mean and, and then in addition playing this other portion of the game it doesn't uh, it, you know, you're still playing, it's roughly still about an hour and a half to play the game, just like any other average board game, but kind of like the game Shark Island, where you're playing blackjack against the shark, which is kind of what it reminds me of. In this case, you're sitting down and playing blackjack with your space, with other space pirates, and you're utilizing the currency that you made from a hard day's work doing that. And so, you have to like both of those aspects. So even somebody was like, it feels like two games in one almost, and both of those games function, uh, cohesively together where you can obtain what you need to win in either game and I'd have to agree with that I think it's very similar in, in that you have to go with e either or and you can choose to be better at one or the other and succeed by doing so Overall, I really like this game because I like black, uh, like blackjack, I like poker, I like Texas Hold'em, I like all the different types of poker games, I like bluffing and all those mechanics, I like the unique changes, adding the grifter card is a lot of fun, choosing whether you want to use that or not is interesting as well, just the game in general is very enjoyable to me, but adding these little twists and unique like modern board game mechanics thrown into the game is fun. And I also don't mind, but don't care as much for the first portion of the game where you're moving around and collecting and doing the pickup and delivery thing and trying to make the best you possibly can as far as resources go but i wasn't too poor i wasn't too bad at it either i actually could figure out what's the best way or at least mostly what's the best way i can make my turn function depending on where everybody is at and being aware that certain players can mess with you on the board and i think this game is going to definitely appeal for certain people it's a game that i'd easily play again and certain people in my table probably wouldn't want to play again so it has this, it has this like mixed reception because of the two separate games what even person even said I really 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 like the Texas Hold'em I'd just like to play with the main deck of cards as well as play Texas Hold'em and use the grifter and not this portion and one person said that they like the other game better and I can see that but I can also see the intermingling of the game and I think it's very unique and very different than a lot of other games I've seen where you put these games that function together cohesively and make an aggressive Texas Hold'em slash pickup delivery game all in one my only real main complaint really is the game's really big and so you have to play Texas Hold'em off to the side find an extra area of space on the board and sometimes you have to play in the cards in the middle of the table just so that everybody can see but otherwise i had a lot of fun with antimatter and if you think you will too check down below link in the description it's on kickstarter thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the other videos here on youtube like subscribe comment hit that bell notification button up there and you will receive all the rest of our videos whenever we put them out we put them out almost daily so we're always going to give you new content new games and indie creators that you haven't seen before or hopefully that give you some unique twists on certain games and this one definitely has a twist to it something that i haven't seen before which i like and uh, i have to also mention too all the components are very nice uh, i'm very interested to see what it comes out with what, it, what it's going to look 
like after just based on the prototype here. Very excited. Check out the link down below as well as go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got our giveaways up there, a bunch of new blog posts. It's it's definitely way different than it used to be. I think you guys are gonna like it. It's very professionalized. Do take a look at the website. Tell me what you think. Leave Josh a comment in one of his blogs. I'd be very happy. His ego will, will be filled to the brim with one of your comments. As well as, of course, if you want to, check out the live stream for this game. If you're still not convinced, maybe you're on the wall, go ahead and hit up our live stream, watch us play it, and then you can determine what you think based on the game mechanics. We play an entire game. It'll be also a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to exploring the bounds of space with you, then going to the par bar and playing a game of Texas Hold'em and potentially losing all the money after our very hard day's worth of work next time.